Hello, Steven here and welcome back. So in the last video, we were working on setting up the sandbox so that I can uh, get my stuff up and running again and get an iFi set back up and start making more data flows again. But I wanted to share how I set up, how I'm setting up the sandbox in order to have an iFi interact with all these different databases that I'm using as well. All right, so here's a list. We're currently looking at the app templates and then under custom templates, I've created some templates already and we'll go through those as we start to put them online. And uh, this is gonna be a list of what else I'm gonna get containers stood up for. So I'm gonna have a uh, Docker container for Apache Cassandra, uh, which is a great database and I've been using a lot for uh, taking care of some stuff at work. I definitely enjoy it a lot. Uh, Elasticsearch, and then we'll get a Prometheus one installed and set up running, and then our most important one, which is our NiFi cluster, which is the whole reason for the sandbox, why I'm setting it up. And then eventually uh, we're gonna I'm gonna utilize the Confluent Kafka uh, Docker container so I can get Kafka up and running as well. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Apache Center one. So when you go to add custom templates, all you need to do is click on add a custom template. Uh, the only thing you really need to fill out is a title, a description, the type that it's going to be. So if you had a Docker swarm set up, so multiple servers all connected as a swarm, or is this a standalone? And then you have three options for getting, so they use Docker Compose files, or that's, how, that's what they utilize to build the templates. So you would paste the content. You can either use the web editor, paste the content of your Compose file here. You could upload one directly, or you could source one from a Git repository on GitHub and pull it directly from there. I'll be utilizing the web editor, and uh, let's go ahead and jump to the ones I've already made. So here we have Apache Cassandra, and this one comes really just from uh, but not the Docker Hub, and it's a Benami image for Apache Cassandra. It's already configured as a three node cluster so here we see the service entry for Cassandra node one using the image from Bitnami Cassandra. Uh, and then the only thing I've really changed on this one is remapping my host ports to my container local ports. And I'm only doing it on the first one because that's all it needs to be done for really to reach the other two. You could definitely um, map more if you wanted to for the other two. In this case, it uh, really just means that only my node one can accept incoming traffic from my uh, NiFi environment, where I really ideally would want it to have ports defined for each node. That way I can spread that load around, right? Because each node in a Cassandra environment can, or inside of a Cassandra uh, cluster, can accept data coming into it, even if they're not the source of the uh, actual database if it doesn't reside on them or a replica doesn't reside on them, they can still take it into any node and then it gets routed out to the rest of the cluster. So each one can become a point where data can be ingested. But in this case, I'm gonna just limit it down to one uh, for what I'm doing for right now. Uh, if I determine that I need more throughput later, I could always add the other two as well. So this is the, this is really all it is. This one's just a quick copy of uh, what's available on the Docker Hub from Bidami. And you can see I already have the title filled out and the description done. I went and found myself a little picture so that it looks decent there. So now let's go ahead and go back. So we should be able to just kick this one off. So we select it, say deploy the stack. You can give it a new name if you want to real quick. But in this case, I'm gonna leave it alone and I'm going to deploy. Keep in mind that first thing it does in the deployment is go and retrieve the image from the Docker Hub in this case, because that's where it's going to be sourced from. So it's going to go download that, and then it should start deploying the container. And then we're going to do the same thing for Elasticsearch. Uh, by the way, I will put a, or let's go ahead and take a look at the, on Docker Hub. So we jump over there. This is the Benami Cassandra one. There's additional details on here. If you want to make changes or uh, see how they have things set up and can, to have additional information for connecting to other containers and all that good stuff here too. So, and here's the compose. 
Here's a note, or here's a uh, user to compose. Some configuration information, environment variables. If there's uh, additional ones you want to add or change, uh, like setting the database or uh, data center and the rack number. But yeah, so this is where it's coming from. I'll leave a link to that down below in the comments as well. And then let's go ahead and jump back over and see if it's completed yet. There we go. So it, in this case, once it's deployed, it takes us to the stacks uh, tab here. And that's because we have we have a Docker compose file. We're not just running uh, Docker from say this the command line. In this case, we're using a compose file to create this one and it has multiple services in it. So it's a stack for Docker. So if we click on it, we can see, well, here's all the different containers inside of this compose file or the different services that get stood up. So what's really happening here is R1 Docker compose file is stood up three different containers, each of them their own, they each have their own IP addresses. So what's happening is even though we only have ports open for one container, the other two containers reference each other directly by their container names. So if we go back and we look at our template again on what was in there, we can see the seed information for the nodes and they're just calling on their container name right here. So they can reference each other there and that's how they can communicate directly to each other just by that container name. So they connect, or containers can connect to each other that way and communicate across ports. All right, so let's go ahead and go back. So we go back to our container list tab. We can see we have our three containers in our massive list that we're gonna start building here. And then we can see each one uses its own resources, can still log into them. Uh, I can see what processes they have going on. You can go into a container and we didn't cover this last time, but uh, besides the logs, you can also go to console and you can SSH directly into a container from portainer's uh, UI. <clears throat> so you get some pretty good control here. So for some reason you need to go in and inspect the container uh, and check out how things are going, you can do that as well. So let's go ahead and disconnect, go back. We have our containers up. Let's go ahead and check out our dbeaver. And in here, I already have Cassandra configured for a connection. So we should be able to, oh, oh wait, did we not, <laughs> did I not do that during the setup? <clears throat> Let me look here. Actually, it defaults to Cassandra, Cassandra. Okay. Oh yeah, password, I changed it. Forgot, it's not its default anymore. <clears throat> so let me go and change that. And let's jump back over there. There we go. So I reconnected to it. Now we have a check mark. So we will establish a connection and it is working correctly because if we look at our key spaces, we can see the list of key spaces available. So we could look at system, table, we could even uh, try to query it. So we'll do system and we'll do peers. There we go. So we'd look at the peer list. We can see our two peers, <coughs> the two other peers that are connected to this one that we happen to be connected to right now as well. And Nice thing about dbeaver is for, in this case, it has a host tab here and you can see the list of all the hosts. <clears throat> all right, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and uh, we're done in this space. Let's go ahead and go back to Portainer and get our next one set up. All right, let's go back, custom templates. So the next one we have is gonna be our Elasticsearch template. I'm going to go ahead and edit that one so we can take a look at it. So like before, title and description are filled out. They need to be. Uh, icon is optional, but I went ahead and dropped one in there. 
And then this is coming straight from the Elasticsearch uh, website or even from their Docker Hub, right? So we jump on over, we jump over there. Uh, make sure I got the right ones. Okay, so we jump over here, we can take a look. So at inside the Docker Hub, here's the official Docker image for Elasticsearch. So I actually grabbed it from, if you do, because I'm, I'm making some changes to it as well. So if you do, uh, let's see. I wanted to, there you go. So install, install last search with Docker. So if we jump down here, here you go. I have a Docker compose file. So I'm actually utilizing this one from them, but it's using their official image as well. <coughs> so let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'll jump back over. And what we have here is there, so under services, we have ES01, so that's the first node, 02, second node, 03, the third node. <clears throat> I kept all that the same. The biggest changes I'm making is the port mapping. So ports are being mapped to different, and really it's just the first one, again, in this case, that has a port being mapped. Uh, and then I added another service at the bottom for Kibana because I want to just start Kibana as part of this uh, this compose file as part of the stack and have it start its service at the same time. So when I added that in here, the changes I had to make were taking the port number for I can get to the UI in this case for Kibana, uh, which sits on 5601 by default. So I'm mapping it from the host to the uh, container. And then under the search URLs for Elasticsearch, so I can find it, I identify ES01. So I'm telling it, hey, go to con that container over there. And that's the one you're using. And then inside the host list, the same thing. I'm referencing ES01, 2, and 3. And as you can see, I'm using their container ports for 9200 all the way through because the ES01 lets the containers connect and talk to each other, and then I can tell which port that they're communicating through. And then additional things for this one. So we can see that each one of these containers is creating a network or connecting to the network elastic. So we jump down to the bottom here, we can see networks elastic and it's using the bridge, bridge driver. So this one is going to create its own network, be separate from the other network that we are use, using for the other containers we created. We can also look at them and see that we have volumes of being referenced this time. So they're all creating their own, they're all creating volumes and giving them their own name. So uh, therefore I'm not having to go through in volumes and add it there because it's being added in the compose file. And that's where we're down here. We have volumes being created, data one through three, and they're all local volumes. So we can go ahead and stand this up and we should be okay. Let's go back out here select it and then say deploy no changes being named to the name and then the same thing for this one it's going to grab that container or grab the images for it's going to download one copy of the image for Elasticsearch, and then one copy of the image for kibana using that one copy of the image for Elasticsearch, it can build multiple containers off of it so that's what the nodes will use to get built with so it's not like we're having to download, um, starting up three nodes, I have to download three copies of the same image. You know, it, that's not what happens here. All right, so hopefully it should be done any moment here. And then we confirm that these are up and running. These are much bigger downloads, it looks like. Okay, well, I'll come back when this is ready. All right, welcome back. So we're done deploying the stack for uh, Elasticsearch now. So we can see it's here. 
and click on it and see inside of the stack we have four containers up and running looks like we have no problems there uh, the biggest one I would want to watch out for is making sure Kibana worked so I can check the log files make sure it's connected correctly we can see it's still booting up and it looks like we might be good now so what I could do Uh, it looks like it's still going. So I'll leave it alone for a minute. It uh, looks like the server's running now for HTTP. And uh, we can confirm this is running. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll check out the containers real quick. All of those look okay. And then let me bring up a page for... Let me go ahead and bring up a page here. So give me just a moment. And all right, so here we go. <clears throat> so now we can see that uh, we'd only get this far when trying to connect to Kibana if we could connect, if Kibana was connected to the server for Elasticsearch or to the cluster. So there we go. We can jump down to, uh, I think it's stack management. I move things around a little bit from the last time I was in here. Okay, so gotta remember dev tools. Okay, that just brings up the uh, console. And don't want to do that right now. Where is my Gotta remember where is Oh, my bad. <clears throat> All right, so let's see, we want to include hidden ones. There we go. So now we can see all the hidden indexes were connected and running, so everything looks good there. All right, so we're done over here, and that gets us our next two containers up and running. And now we can jump back. So what we have here now is we do have a Kibana container running. We have our three Elasticsearch that create our cluster for Elasticsearch. We have Apache Cassandra running with three containers that create the cluster there. We have our MS SQL server running, our Redis server, our Mongo, our MySQL, and then we have our Portainer container, which is what we're using here to access a UI for Docker. Now, let's go back to our list here, and the next one we'll end up looking at, and we won't do it in this video because we're already reaching that lengthy time limit there, but uh, we'll cover our Li-Fi cluster, get that up and running, and if we have time, we'll go ahead and set up our Confluent Kafka containers as well. And then we can go ahead and start jumping into NiPy and building out our next data flow. So I'll catch you then.